and we're live good morning youtube from a bright and sunny cheshire how are we this morning <laughs> i'm just waiting for a few people to get in here wait for the sun to come out and blind me so i can't see the screen but hey ho that's all okay can you hear me and see me okay Right, well we get we'll get cracking anyway so welcome to another simply diagnostics video courtesy of www.simplydiag.net the simply diag network <laughs> hope you're all all right and what we've got here morning Ian, morning brian morning michael what we've got here is a citroen ds4 1.6 hdi um, and it's the customer complaint is no cooling fan operation so going back to yesterday's video um it's it should be there in the list now morning everybody <laughs> morning um going back to yesterday's video we found if you remember we found fuse 2 that was there was blown and we were looking for a short to ground so i've done a little bit of uh, prep work this morning We've pulled the wiring diagram out again so you can see so fuse one two there that was the fuse that was blown and that goes down and feeds pin f3 on the radiator control module and the radiator fan control module fits here at the front it literally plugs in plugs in there like so and pin three is that white wire that's the wire we're concerned with okay so how to go about testing the short to ground first thing first i had to take obviously you can see i had to take the front bumper off believe it or not it was a five minute job to get the bumper off we got a 10 mil screw there well a 10 mil bolt there and a 10 mil bolt down here and the the headlamp comes out morning alan yeah it is same on this side headlamp headlamp out and then basically what we had, I'll show you on the bumper, it's easier. So on the bumper, all these little nudges at the bottom, we had a Torx 20 screw in each of those. And then we had on the wheel arch liner, coming through here, we had a Torx 25 there. Okay, on top of that then, into this bracket here, we had two 10 millis, two 10 milli bolts, one there and one there and a little plastic clip that clips into there the whole thing then pulls forward you've got oh sorry you've got a torx 20 there and one there and the front of the bumper actually clips into these little holes here and you just have to be very gentle get a little pry tool and it all comes out and then all we've got connecting it is one multi-plug down there so the first thing we want to look at is any signs you know do a good visual inspection of the of the wiring loom too and what we're looking for are touch points anywhere where it could touch touch out and short to ground or any signs where there's corrosion or green crusties or anything like that any visible indications that we've got damage or water ingress to the loom so looking at this it's pretty well clipped up we can see that the bolts are actually rusty that are holding the module on so there has been some water getting in there but the pins themselves are clean and shiny bright so following the loom down yeah we can we can follow it all the way down there's no real obvious signs of water ingress and then we get to this part here that's the lowest part of the loom and it's actually hanging down lower so i would probably want to have a good look inside there okay you can see but then that clip there is secure so this is a suspect area straight away this is a suspect area here just because it's a low point and another low point <clears throat> and we come through the other side and we're looking up you can see all the way up it's still clipped in it's clipped in round get to here and what do we see here immediately we see not one but 
two touch points. We've got a touch point there. If I just move that slightly out of the way, you can see we've got a touch point there. It doesn't look like it's visibly gone through the insulation, but it may well have. And a touch point here, we can see the rust marks. Again, if we just ease it off slightly, we can see it's not actually perforated, it's not actually gone through there. So that this one here is probably a safe bet. This one here deserves more looking at. Although it only goes to an earth point, so I doubt very much whether that's it. We follow the loom up. And then we get to here and we can't see any more now unless we start taking fuse boxes out. So what we want to do now is just have a quick general check and see if we can see what the issue is so the first thing we're going to do we've pulled the fuse we're going to get our test light connected to a good ground a known good ground this is the um, the old snap on one with the four mil banana on the end of it that I've had this for absolutely donkey's years and you get a range of you get a selection of probes and that that you can put there's a four mil banana on either end no longer available but the good news is Warwick Test Supplies have just done a set of 4mm banana adapters that actually screw on <laughs> yeah probably Jason yeah, Warwick do actually do now a 4mm banana adapter that screws onto the OTC test lights so the first thing we want to do is we want to find out which side of that fuse goes to is powered up and which side goes to the component okay so I'm literally I've just turned the ignition on because it's a terminal 15 feed get my test light test me test equipment you can see me test light lighting up now this only passes 440 milliamps this so I need to find which which side of that fuse is live and the answer on this is the front side the front side is live okay so we need to be going on the output side of that fuse which is where that pink probe is okay and all we're going to do we're going to turn the ignition back off turn the ignition back off and then we're going to move our slight ground to battery positive okay again then we need to test our test light make sure our test light is we've got a good feed and we have and then what i'm going to do i'm going to put power down the output terminal of that fuse using my test light okay if there's any path to ground that bulb will light okay so what i need to so now that whole system is that that whole cable that one cable is live okay because my test light will only allow 440 milliamps to pass through it it's acting as a current limiting device yeah so all i'm going to do now is whilst focusing on the test light i'm just going to touch the loom gently and push against it and i'm looking for what i want to see is that test light to light up if that test light lights up then i found me short to ground and I'm just working my way along the loom slowly. You can see I've got to here now. I'm just working my way along that loom slowly. Just gently manipulating it. I'm not ragging at it because I don't really want to disturb anything just yet. Bear in mind this is only a five amp circuit. So it's just all that really. It's just a, a, a power feed for the module. I'm just a hello, I'm here, wake up. And I'm going all the way along the loom and I'm just gently manipulating the loom, pushing it against the, the, any touch points that there might be to see if I can get it to arc. And I can't. Okay, so my test light's not lighting up. To demonstrate to you what would happen if we did have a short to ground, I've just put a back probe in the back of that there. I've got a fuse jumper connected to the body ground and all I'm going to do 
Let's connect that to ground now. Okay. So now that wire is in effect short to ground. Now look what's happened to me test light. My test light has lit up. Yeah. So that shows me if there's a, if there's a short to ground, my test light will light. Yeah, because there's a path to ground. Somebody just said, what did somebody just say then? Sandy it was, could they be an in, in, intermittent short in the module? They could have Sandy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to plug that module back in. Right, that's the module plugged back in. See, we've still got no path to ground. I'm just going to gently manipulate the connector to see if it's anything in the connector, anything in the wire. And then go run back round, run back, run back round that loom. Very, very slightly, just to see if there's anything at all, and there's nothing. So, what we've probably got here, as Sandy says, an intermittent short in that module. That's probably what we've got. So, we'll, we'll take those screws out and we'll have a look and just see. But I also, before I do any, before I condemn that module, because I don't think that module is available on its own with it being a DS. Before we condemn that module, I'm just going to open these looms up and just have a quick look in there to make sure that the wires haven't rubbed on the loom, on the conduit, on the corrugations. And then we can see again, if I put sticker path to ground in there, the test light lights up. So that's all there is. To using a test light for testing short to grounds and um, we actually did a video on this on Staten Island looking for a short to ground on a coil pack on a petrol Ford Transit Connect so if you go back and have a look at that video I'm not sure whether it's on my channel or on Keith's channel new level auto but we actually did another video on that so hope you found that interesting we're going to pull this loom, I'm going to pull that conduit back and just do a quick visual in inspection. And then I'm afraid it's bye bye for that module. Yeah, it could, Ian. Ian, you could, you could, you could do it equally. Um, you could do that equally as well. The only, the only thing with a low current buzzer, um, obviously you'd have to test it um, to see what current it was drawing. You could use a power probe, you know, connected to, connected to ground or whatever. There's lots of different ways, but the way I like to do it is using a test light because the test light acts as a current limiting device. So even if I find that short to ground, I'm not going to set fire to anything, burn anything, put any any voltages into a module that shouldn't really be there that can do any damage. So we're actually using the test light as a visual indicator and as a safety device, a current limiting device. So. I hope you all found that very, very interesting. If you did, please give us a like, thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment box below when the video is uploaded. Share the video with your friends, with your Facebook groups and all that. If you're not a member of our community at www.simplydiag.net, it's free to join. And then there is also a paid membership trade only section. So thanks for watching, folks. You're awesome.